TSA basketball on Long Edition. You're looking at the 2-0 Fighting Saints coming off a double overtime win against Green Mountain College. And tonight, Linden State College is the opponent. Let's meet the starting lineup for the Fighting Saints, coached by Phil Bartlett. right after the feed. Saints with a win on the road against Albany Pharmacy. A very good team, very tight ball game it was. And then of course, a very good Green Mountain squad. Nah, can't get much better in double overtime. So tonight, it doesn't get any easier here with Linden. In the green uniforms, Jacob Gray will jump center against Brad Drysdale. Drysdale and White. Saints on their home court. Settle in for the next, oh, usually takes an hour, an hour and 25, an hour and 30 minutes. So. Relax, watch Bunger Vision, go to pegtv.com if you want to review any games, watch on the internet at your leisure anywhere in the universe. And we're underway. Jamie Wright on the point guard from West Rutland, played for Phil Bartlett, of course, in high school. He was a thousand point scorer, as was Phil Bartlett of West Rutland. Thomas on the wheel will go up. He's coming off a 20 point night against Green Mountain College, and he'll go to the floor. Look at that, he'll call a timeout. So Thomas Hustling will get on the floor, get a hold of the basketball, call timeout, 20 seconds into the contest, and we're going to have a 30-second timeout. Well, I'll tell you what, it was a fast start, a good start, and a good hustle start. And it's good. One question always comes to mind after a double overtime game is the intensity. Will they come out to CSJ and have that intensity immediately where they have to work into the ball game? Well, I think right there showed you they came out and were firing on all cylinders already. Tyler Harrington with the big shots to send the game into overtime at the end of regulation. And then, of course, at the end of the first overtime, another big three-point shot to send the game into the second overtime. And it was in the second overtime that Doug Childs took over the scoring for CSJ. Jamie Ryda played just about every minute of the ball game in that double overtime contest. He'll give it off to Ryan, and he'll look at the three and give it back to Harrington. Harrington is basically a threat anywhere on the floor he touches the ball. It's a three ball in it, and got it! Jamie Ryan with a three-pointer, and they're going to have to fix the net because he was smoked it. It was so good. Three-nothing Saints, and you can see Childs in the back court. And he'll work against Fortunato. And I want to double-check, make sure yeah, that's Jose Fortunato number... 11, and there's the drive up, and the running one-hander, no good. Drysdale couldn't control it, tipped the ball back out, and three ball on it themselves, and around the rim, no good. The jump by Harrington mistimed it, as it said on the rim, the ball did the second time, but here it comes Ryder with the basketball. CSJ playing in there. Well, it's just called the CSJ Athletic Complex. I think it needs a name. Oh, Harrington! Dropping it through the bottom of the bucket. Didn't even touch the twine. Two threes in a row now. Six nothing Saints. I'm trying to work it down in low. Drysdale, he seems to have put on some weight this summer. Last year, Gray will get the bucket, making it six to two Saints. But again, it's something he's got to work on is that strength and some weight. Boy, they get the ball down in low, and Fortunato is going to pull the ball back out. That's going to go up, and no. Tipped again by the Saints, controlled by Linden, and they couldn't get the drive to finish it off. That was King that took the final shot, number three for Linden. So the Saints, who as a team can shoot the three ball well, Harrington can 
go inside because he's 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, good kid. But he likes to step out and, and take those perimeter shots, very capable of it. And they'll miss it. King with the rebound, right up, cuts some problem, trying to slow down the progress of the basketball. Saints can't afford, with a very thin bench, to get any type of foul trouble. Gray up and going to call an offensive foul. Harrington planting himself, taking one for the team. Player control foul, whistled uh, number 15, Jacob Gray. So Gray will get the foul assessed to him, and Harrington again, he plays defense, he plays offense, he can dish the ball off. I mean, he just does it all out there, the guy does. Ryda taking over the point guard position from Victor Valdez, who's now the one of the assistant coaches. And King pressured the ball. They were able to get the pass off, and it's in the hands of Thomas. Thomas waiting for some movement as they're waiting for a dry zone set to screen. Harrington, nope. One for two from three-point arc for Harrington. Two for three as a team. The Saints are going to get down to Gray. Up and boy, he said it gently on the rim and a tip back, no good. And Drysdale will take it out of the air and right up ahead to Childs. 6 2 Saints and Childs will kick it back out. And Harrington from his favorite corner gets it. Two threes for Harrington. And that is his office, that corner of the court. He loves to shoot it from the wing like that, that three ball. Travel called on Fortunato. The Saints. Like I said, no lack of quick intensity here for CSJs. They're coming out and they're forcing the issue. They got a 9-2 lead and they're dictating the tempo of the ball game right now. Coach Phil Bartlett in his second year here at CSJ. Oh, Drysdale. Couldn't handle the pass. It goes out of bounds and Brad shaking his head. Upset with himself. Very good athlete. Just Sometimes he'll start the game off and be right there on the zone. Other times it takes him a while to get into the ball game, but when he's on, he's devastating. He's so athletic, got a great leaping ability. Really hasn't found a spot yet that he's comfortable at every night on the floor. And Fortunato and well, King, I'm sorry, King and Ryda come together and Ryda able to control the basketball. Yeah, the other night I did the game, but coach, Bartlett came up and talked to me before the start of this contest. He said he had a blast listening to the uh, the game the other night against Green Mountain College. Well, you know, I am a character by nature. Not good, not bad, just a character. And I uh, went to the eye doctors before the ball game. And he dilated my eyes and, oh my God, it took me to almost the first overtime to get my vision back. And I thought it was pretty cool that I could even tape the thing. They get it squared away now. It's going to be Hornets basketball. So Linden will have the ball. 16 08 to go in the first half. 9 to 2. CSJ with the lead. This is King with the basketball. No, it's, it's good to start the game off with Vision. That's up and no. Right already showing how much he's matured from last year to this year at the college point guard position. Plus the fact, I don't have a number, but he's definitely bulked up and put on some weight and gotten much bigger and stronger. Child for the basketball now. Works off from the screen by, yeah, you see Drysdale set the screen and rolled to the basket. There's Drysdale. Again, nose for the ball, great instincts, and he'll get the basket. Like I learned last year, he's, oh, nice shot by King. 11 to four, that was a two point shot. Drysdale, quiet and businesslike on the court, but quite a character in the locker room. I, by the, oh, they're gonna call a foul, offensive foul on Ryda. Yeah, so each team has suffered a player control foul here in the first five minutes of the contest. I was told by the coach that as far as characters go in the locker room, Drysdale is in the top three as, uh, and you need that, you need that. Fortunato looking for the pass to King, he was covered. King came all the way across from elbow to elbow and that's gonna be a missed shot, offensive rebound. They'll squirt the ball back out. Ryder will dive at it, miss it, Uck up underneath and we got a foul, shift shots. Ryder getting up off the floor and the foul assessed to Drysdale. Now Drysdale fouled out the other night, early in the contest. Uh, 
I believe early in the second half, he fouled out against Green Mountain College. And he does have a knack to get in foul trouble. He's a, he's a shot blocker. He's aggressive after the ball. Does a lot of swatting at the ball, and he'll pick up those fouls. So at the line will be King, and chance to cut into that seven-point deficit right now. A pretty decent crowd on hand, but I'd like to see more. I'd like to see him fill this gym up is actually what I'd like to see. This is this should be Rutland's college team right here, right in the backyard of Rutland City, CSJ Basketball. Avery King. It was just two years ago they were the Sunrise Conference champions. Last year going to the Final Four and, and tries to with a smart play right there. Threw the ball off from a Linden player going out of bounds. And they're going to set the line play up. Get into the Childs. Now Harrington, 22 on the shot clock. And Harrington just waits for Ryan to come all the way back to hand in the basketball and get things going here. Up and no. Line rebound came out to the side. And again, a foul called on the Saints. And this is going to be on Childs, number five. Ball is number five, Doug Childs. So Gray and Fortunato on the backcourt. You get the CSJ schedule also. If you don't look in the Rutland Herald and see you know, the day of the game, if you want it earlier than that, just go to the CSJ website and click on athletics. And you'll see the not only the men's, but the women's basketball schedule. And nice job by Harrington. He just, I don't know how they didn't see him. He's a big guy, but he looped in there and made the seal. Evan Jobes. Coming in the ball game next for the Saints as he gets to the scorer's table. Joel coming off a big game against Green Mountain College. Especially in the second half, he has some huge free throws. Drysdale back into the hands of Childs. Then Thomas. Now, Jamal Thomas, 24. First year I've seen him play for the Saints. I saw his size, and I'm thinking, oh my God, he's going to be like a, like a tank down the side. Harrington will swish it, and we're going to have a timeout taken. As it goes 14 to 6 Saints, and we're going to have a Linden timeout. Timeout for Linden. Oh, but I started talking about Thomas, and I, and I saw the big, wide, muscular body. I'm thinking he's going to be a tank inside. He's going to be a banger inside. Then the other night against Green Mountain College, like I said, he had 20 points, but he stood outside. I remember at least once, if not more than that, and, and he was hitting perimeter shots, three point shots. Yeah, I think that timeout by Linden. Time was more CSJ. to get their defense aligned with Harrington more than it was to set up an offense, but they'll get the basket there and it's go 14 to 8. We'll have a timeout taken by CSJ. After the timeout, you see the official talking to Harrington about running the baseline. Gray will cover the inbounds pass. CSJ looking at that. Uh, actually, CSJ caught the quick timeout after the made basket, and I'm just assuming now, seeing that they were talking about the press they were going to face. And, Oh, the night just unfolding. This could become a long encounter tonight. A lot of punches, counter punches to be thrown. Adjustments made and Drysdale. But when they start him away from the basket and almost isolate him on one side against his defender, that's when he's at his most effectiveness. Or on the break where it's a fluid situation. King will lob the ball into the corner. It's a nice grab over there. And then the ball by Childs. Yep. Yeah. That Childs with a good hustle. And we have Suff coming in for Linden, number 42 coming in, Taylor Burke. And Ben Sackett, 51. And it's going to be Sackett taking the ball out of bounds right in front of the Saints bench, right in front of Jamal Thomas, actually, number 24. Fortunato. Fortunato. He's matching, he's having a problem matching up with Ryder right now. Ryder, about four inches shorter than he is, but a lot quicker. But Ryder lacks in physical, natural quickness. He makes up for in basketball quickness with his instincts. As Heiser coming in the ball game, Jeff Heiser at the scores table, along with Thomas for CSJs. They're about to get a lot more physical out there. There's the rebound, and get it off from Burke up ahead to Fortunato. Fortunato had the ball slapped out of bounds by Ryder. If you've never watched Jamie Wright a play, whether at the elementary, junior high school, or high school level, or college, he will come out of this game with all kinds of hickeys and floor burns where he's diving all over and hustling all over, and that's just the way he plays. So Jobst in the ballgame. And again, Evan is, spells his name J-O-B-S-T. So I'm pronouncing it Jobst, and if I'm wrong, I hope he would tell me so, but 
That's Sackett, and the big man hit the three ball. Ben Sackett, wearing a linebacker, number 51, hit out nothing but twine, cuts the lead to five at 16 to 11. Now last year, Linden and CSJ both here and up at Linden played some intense, interesting ball. Oh, you can hear the hand slap going through. Yeah, 42 with a foul. That's Taylor Ball's Burke. Line, 42, Taylor Burke. On the line, shooting for CSJ from Turner Falls, Massachusetts, number 22, Evan Jost. So Jost at the line. I believe they just said he's from Turner Falls, Massachusetts. Of course, that's home of Hallmark Institute of Photography. That's a tough place to get into. That's an elite, elite photography school. So Heiser in the ball game along with Thomas Harrington. Jost at the line, and of course, Ryda out there at the point. 17 to 11, and that ball went about, out of bounds off a CSA player. And it's going to be Linden with the basketball. And you see something in common already. The Green Mountain Eagles, of course, wore dark green, just like Linden's wearing dark green. So the Saints looking to keep their streak alive against dark green teams. Sack it. Oh, boy. And they're going to have to put a body on him out top. As Sackett came in and hit two threes in a row and cut the lead to three. And Thomas will run the ball down in the corner. And give it back on the trail to Ryda. Jamie Ryda pulls it out, shows that patience and maturity he's had from down in his second year of college ball. Heiser holds the ball and gives it back to Ryda. Shot clock at 17, game clock at 11 17, score 17 to 14. And Harrington with a rare miss here in the first half as Ryda takes the ball out of midair and they'll reset the shot clock to 35 seconds and the Saints start over here on offense. Pump fake, gave the shot up, Jost will spin, and oh, Evan! Evan Jost showing us some amazing quickness on the spin move. And Doug Childs at the scorer's table for CSJ. And that's Heiser out there defensively now on Sackett. They wanted to pick and roll to the basket, Gray got covered, he'll step out beyond the three-point arc and leave it short and off the mark. Fortunato with the rebound, so each team getting second chances here in sequence, that's going to be a running one-hander. No good, that ball's going to come all the way up top and be grabbed by Saka. They didn't reset the shot clock. I thought for sure the ball hit the rim. Yeah, nobody caught it. I don't. I don't. I thought they should have a new 35 to work with. Nope. The referee just said Pat Bizon did a great job with the shot clock. It didn't hit the rim. Of course, Pat Bizon has been doing this for about 78 years now. Well, maybe not quite that. Thomas for three. Nope, that was a big, long three. No good. Out of the pack, Linden with the break. Numbers right there. Harrington in the position behind the back. Forgot the ball. Went and got it and made the finish. Get a foul in the backcourt. Right, it just too quick back there. Hawkins called for the foul. He made the shot and then he got the foul. So he had a little bit of both worlds there. It's Harrington over the top of Coach Bartlett. Childs is going to come in I'm and you see Ryder taking a breather. Now the other night Ryder suffered from leg cramps all through the second half. And it's hot in the gym tonight. It's, it's warm. He's going to have to stay hydrated and carb and we call it uh, potassiumed up and a lot of times when you when you bulk up or put weight on or muscle on, you, you'll suffer through a lot of periods of cramping like that more than you're used to. Now, I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just trying Dr. Munger. Harrington with the grab, will wheel to the inside, had the ball strips, squirts out, lands up in the hands of Madison. He'll go up and get it. Tyler Madison with the bucket. Right place, right time, and didn't hesitate to pull the trigger on the shot. 21-16, Saints with the lead. Nine minutes and change here in this first half of play. It's been a good one. Saints basketball on Munger Vision. Once again, another year of Munger Vision in Saints basketball. Now just a couple games in December, home for CSJ, and then they'll be on their break between semesters and have them back in the new year. Got high school basketball starting up very shortly. And I have Mill River boys and girls, West Rutland girls, MSJ boys, possibly MSJ girls. So walking in and Joe showing the move tonight down in the low post.
as King will bring the ball up. Right now, they've had no answer for Evan Jost down in the low post. He's scored the last two buckets down low for the Saints. Up, and there's a nice job by Burke. Taylor Burke playing with his back to the basket. And I'm not sure where they're throwing it, but King will make the grab, walk the tightrope along the sideline, and now motor up the far side of the court here at CSJ. That's going to be way outside. And on the weak side rebound is just Thomas there, and he'll snag the ball out of the air and give it off to Childs. And looking to post up Jost again. That's been a good matchup for him. And now they'll clear out. And well, Jost was just wasn't expecting the pass. And Childs picked up a, again, I, I, that's his second foul. He did stop the ball from coming up the floor, but they're 60 feet from the basket. A lot of Saints coming in, and I use that term loosely. Ryder, Kaiser, and Drysdale coming in for CSJ. As Freeman to bring the ball into play to King. Each team winding through their benches. Up and tell you, nice job of just taking it right into Drysdale. Ryder with the grab and right into the front court. Ryder, top of the circle, will pull up a right one-hander and oh, you can see Drysdale almost able to follow it up and slam it home. He'll draw the foul and again, he came in on the trail end of the play. Nobody put a body on him and he showed that great leaping ability and got up there and got the basketball and drew the foul. Gonna have two shots coming up. As Gray will check into the game for Linden, they've cut the lead to three, Linden has. 7.31 to go in the first half. Each team with four team fouls, and that's the second foul on Taylor Burke. And Drysdale will drain it. And Harrington is going to come in now and replace Thomas. That's a CSJ change. Yeah, we're all set now as Drysdale gets set for shot number two. And he'll get them both. No pressure in the backcourt. Saints didn't go to pressure in the backcourt until well, seven, eight, nine minutes to go in that Green Mountain game in regulation. And boy, that really helped change the tide. And there's the basket. Jacob Gray. Gray off the bench into the ball game and got a bucket. And that's going to be picked off. Yeah, they got sloppy in the backcourt. Yeah. Nichols made the steal, made the basket. Drysdale. Ducks underneath the defender and got it. See that in the open court. That is where he excels. He's not really comfortable in a set offense. He likes to get out there and be offensive, be fluid, be creative in the open. Break down the defender. 27-24 Saints with the lead ball going out of bounds too. Linden, and they're going to have Fortunato come into the ball game for Linden. I'll tell you, Sackett comes out. Sackett was a lot of instant offense off the bench for Linden. King with the grab, King with the shot, and King won't get the bucket. Rebound on the weak side. Fortunato just reached for the top of Tyler Madison. Madison will come out to pressure the ball. Saints scrambling around defensively right now. 27-26, so... After getting off to a slow start, Linden all the way back to just a one-point deficit now. First half has flown by. There's only been eight combined fouls by the two teams, so not a lot of stoppage in play. As Nichols with the box out on right, it gets the ball off up ahead to Fortunato. Fortunato into the front court between circles, goes to the elbow, will push the ball inside to Gray. Harrington able to come around and knock the ball away with his left hand into the hands of Ryder. Ryder to Harrington from his office. No, it won't happen this time. Madison tips it to the corners where Nichols chases it down and they'll go up ahead to Freeman. Freeman, front court. Freeman's pass hard to handle. King will set, load, fire, no good. Harrington will outleap Gray for the basketball. Been a frantic sequence in the last minute and a half here at CSJ. You must go to the website, get the schedule, and get down here and support this team. College basketball right here in your backyard. College basketball on Munger Vision. On Peg TV, Channel 15 Sports. 5.38. And boy, they got, almost got the steal. Fortunato came in on the backside. This is a pull up and Drysdale trying to get involved early and often in the ball game tonight. He was quiet at the beginning and at the end against Green Mountain College, but he was busy in the middle. And Nichols 
will give the lead to Linden, 29-27. Nice job. Linden changed the tempo of the game by going to that full court press. Harrington looking for the foul. Drysdale looking for the follow-up. We'll get it. Drysdale with the follow-up will get the basket. To the corner to King. Ryder came out, challenged him, and going to foul. King will hit the floor. I'm looking for a ref. There we go. Harrington will pick up the foul, and two shots coming up for King. This will be the first on Harrington, fifth on the team. 29 all on the scoreboard. Oh, I'm telling you, this is going to be just like Green Mountain College and the Albany Pharmacy game. Don't be heading anywhere. This is going to be an entertaining evening of public access entertainment. Jobes Thomas. Oh, we got a new body out there. And Small, Nate Small. So three Saints into the ball game. And Small didn't play in the Green Mountain College game. I have seen Small play prior to that. We'll see what he brings to the game tonight. Harrington on the missed shot. We stay tied at 29. Now they had matched up Jost against Nichols earlier. Let's see what they want to do for a matchup now. Different defender on Jost. Thomas thought about the three ball, brought it down, goes between the legs, tries to break down. Freeman kicks it out, and that's going to be no good. Goes right back to Small. He'll spin, lose the handle. Ball batted around, ends up in the hands of Jost. Goes to Harrington, and there's the finish. Quick hands. Lucky break, too. Right spot, right time. Made him pay. 31-29. Saints take the lead back with 4.15 to go in the first half. And that's going to drop in there for a three ball. Linden will take the lead over again as they go back and forth here. Let's see that full court press. Just change the tempo. And the game. Pat McCarthy, 31, coming into the ball game for Linden. They're going to have Harrington take the ball out of bounds. They're going to put Gray on the basketball defensively. Ryda and Thomas in the backcourt. They go to Ryda in the corner, and he'll rip the ball out between two defenders. Get it to Jost. He traveled. What had happened there is Jost turned and did his best impression of John Travolta on Saturday Night Fever as he shuffled those feet like he was discoing. Thirty-two, thirty-one. Linden, just a tad under four minutes to go in the opening half of play. www.pegtv.com. Click video on demand, and you can watch Munger Vision anywhere, anytime. Oh yeah, that's been out of bounds. They're trying to feed the low post, get the ball to Jacob Gray. Went out of bounds. Chase going to have to make some adjustments at halftime on the press break. They've seen three different formations of a press so far. Childs left open and off the mark. Jost will muscle the rebound. And that's swatted away by Gray right to the hands of Thomas. Shot clock at 24. Childs fake the three ball. Goes inside. Kicks it off on the baseline. And Harrington on reversal. Can't kiss it off the glass. And then put English on the ball. Just didn't cooperate with him. Nice job of chasing that down in the corner. Ryder tips it to Thomas, and Thomas will grab a hold of it and then throw up ahead to Childs. Childs turns, Childs up, Childs, yes! Great body control by Doug Childs, and the finish, 33-32 CSJ. King left alone, and that's not going to happen. There's an offensive putback by Gray, and I don't know how they lost track of the big body, but he was unmarked and got the bucket as Joe was fouled trying to drive up the floor. Fortunato will pick up the foul. And drives the 15 right there. Coming back in the ball game for Evan Jones. They're gonna put Harrington in charge of bringing the ball into play. You see here Ryda calling the play out. Yeah, nice to see the crowd starting to fill in here. Ryda forgot the basketball. Harrington will go back to get it. King has it. Drives it. Will go to the floor. And we're going to have a push up. We've called on Gray. Yep. Three, three, five. Much to the dismay of the Linden side, that will be a push called on Gray. And that's going to be the 16th foul on Linden. Second on Gray. 
court tonight. They're going to slip into the back court now. You see him coming to the picture. And Ryder will work the ball up off the screen set by Harrington. Thomas likes that elbow and no good this time. Long and strong and rebound into the hands of Linden. This is Fortunato in the front court. Goes right by Ryder. Will pull up 10 footer and got it. 36 33. Hornets by three. Remember the other night though, Green Mountain, CSA went to halftime down by nine. Same deal. They started off like gangbusters in that game, lost their lead, and then were able to come back in the second half. That's all twice. Childs for three will tie the ball game up. It had been a while since CSA had gone back to the three ball or made three ball. They started the game off with two threes in a row. First by Ryder, second by Harrington. And you can see right there the defender, Thomas, came out and took away that option for the three ball. Ball will roll into the hands of Fortunato. He'll go up, over, and got it. Not intimidated at all by Thomas. And he'll just shoot over the top of him and give Linden back a two-point lead at 36 to 38. And boy. Drysdale getting a lot of traffic, man. He looked like he was trying to navigate Route 7 North at 4.35 o'clock in the afternoon here in Rutland and lost the ball out of bounds. So Linden able to settle down after that initial start by CSJ. That's all, Twine! Calkins with a three-pointer makes it a 41-36 ball game. Drysdale. Looks to the bench, gets the play call, and now directs traffic out there. They want to isolate him on this side. He'll spin, go up, and get it! That's what they wanted, isolate him. Broke down his defender. There is no way that McCarthy was going to be able to handle Drysdale's quickness and jumping ability all alone on the side of the court. Cuts the lead to three and a chance to make it two here as he goes to the free throw line and Sackett coming in. Number 51 coming back in for McCarthy. Remember Sackett came in and hit, I believe it was three perimeter, perimeter shots. Let's do that one again, perimeter shots off the bench and they're going to have to know where he is out there. Job's coming into the ball game for CSJ's at the score is Guys, they will make it a bucket ball game at 41-39. That's yeah, so Jost after a very brief rest back in the contest. Wearing number 22 for the Fighting Saints. Fort Tonado. To Sackett, getting to work right away. It's three threes for Sackett. Lead back to five. Drysdale with the catch at midcourt, and this time he pulls up, waits for the numbers to come back and greet him. Harrington, the Childs. In shot clock, about 11 seconds difference with the game clock. 22 on the shot clock. Childs, three ball on it, no. Off the back of the rim, comes off with a long rebound in the hands of Saka. Saka lost the handle, and Harrington takes the bump, backs it up, and now finds his teammate, Drysdale. And there is no shot clock, it's off now. 17 seconds left in the first half of play. Five point Linden lead. Athletically, the table directly tipping in favor of CSJ. But they'll make the jump. And Joseph on the weak side puts it up and that's it. We have a 44, 41 Linden lead at the half. And a nice finish there for the Saints and we'll pick you up in the second half of action on Munger Vision. And the CSA basketball to get this second 20 minutes of action going here. And the way the night's been playing back and forth, could be looking at one of those overtime games like we had against Green Mountain College. Coach Bartlett briefly talking to me before this half started, said he was much happier with the first half of basketball he saw tonight as he did and what he saw against Green Mountain College. There's a tying three point shot, 44 all. Saints have shot the three point shot very well tonight. And Drysdale sitting back there with the steal up ahead. This is Childs going to take it up off the glass, and they're looking for the dunk and just made a misplay on the ball. They're trying to go off the backboard to Drysdale, and he wanted to hammer it home. 15 Gray took a shot, and I was told at halftime that the program is wrong. It's not Jacob Gray, it's Jason Gray. So. Got the last name right. That's really all matters on the bills, but you got to pay him. So 44 all, 19 10 to go. In the second half of playing, Jamie Ryder 
with the basketball. Same starting five for CSJ here in the second half. The start of the first half. Thomas looking to find the shooting touch tonight will be off the mark. Fortunato, Fortunato with the ball. We'll get it down inside to Gray. Up to the hoop, and he'll get it on the run. And there's the press right there, and that time CSJ very fortunate to get the basketball and keep possession of it. Drysdale, kind of side, yeah, see him setting up his opponent, and this time they sagged off on him, they'll just pull it back out, and Harrington from his office, no. Harrington with a couple threes in the ball game, he'll miss that one, here's the long pass up front. Gray up, Gray got it. And again, Linden, when they've been able to push the ball down the court, in an up-tempo style is when they've been more comfortable and they've excelled. They got back defensively that time, did a nice job and forced CSJ to come out and start their half-court offense. Child's gonna have a hold fall, yeah. Three, three, and... It's Avery King fall, called for the fall. Number three, Avery King. Yeah, no shot, it was a possession fall on the floor and Harrington will take the ball out of bounds. 48-44, Linden with the lead. CSJ coming in with a 2-0 record. They started last year at 2-0 and then went on a uh, little bit of a losing streak and they're hoping to avoid that here today. Three good opponents opening up their schedule. Fortunato all the way up behind the back and you see that? Each team trying to go a little showtime, get away from basic basketball and turn the ball over. CSJ with the pass off the backboard looking for the dunk and right there behind the back and out of bounds. Nothing like just fundamental basketball. Albany Pharmacy, a good program. The CSJ squad went on the road and won in Albany Pharmacy, down in Albany. And then, of course, here goes Fremont. There's Drysdale again, isolating him on that side. They tried to bring help over defensively, just got there late, and it's off from King's hands out of bounds. A turnover, as that time they tried to crank up the tempo and just. They had King behind the defense, which passed just a tad too long. And again, sloppy pass back, and that will lead to a turnover up and got it. You mean, you gotta give Culkin's credit and the press credit, but that was just poor execution on CSJ's side. Up and Thomas will get it down the floor and get it. And right now, both teams getting it up and down the floor. Baseline to baseline, there's a front rim shot. No good, Thomas with the rebound. Thomas on the dribble will get the pass on the bounce to Ryda for three sets, fires, got it! Just the way Ryda started the game off, hitting a big three. This time the three will get the Saints back to lead at 51-50. King in the corner wants to dump it down to Gray. Gray, matched up against Harrington, over the top of him and miss it this time. Weak side rebound, batted around, ends up in Ryda's hands. Ryda pushes it to midcourt, slows it down, lets the numbers get there, and offensively let Childs now work between the circles. And Childs against Fortunato will go in the corner and Harrington up and no. But who's that right? I try to get inside Fortunato and strong hands by Fortunato will keep the basketball. King up and King, well I tell you what, they call that defensive. King changed his direction in air to initiate the contact. And, oh yeah, I'm a, I wear blue, I'm a Saints fan, but I gotta tell you, I think Linden got a pretty sweet call right there. I didn't think, it, if anything, I thought it was gonna be a no call or an offensive foul, but it'll go against Thomas, and it'll be his first personal, first on the team here in the second half, and the shot going up from the free throw line by King will be good. We're tied at 51. Merck, 42 back in the ball game for Linden. He'll replace number 31, McCarthy. Getting set for the second shot now. Here's King. Swish. The lead will go back now to Linden. Like I said, I have West Rutland girls basketball starting on December 12th on Munger Vision. Mill River boys and girls basketball. MSJ basketball for CSJ. Still here in December. There's a travel call on Drysdale. He had the baseline. He was just a little excited to get there and shuffled the feet. And that'll bring Evan Jost into the ballgame at 22. For CSJ, number 22, Evan Jost. And Thomas will take a breather, number 24, for the Saints. Again, not a bad crowd here tonight. I'd like to see more people. I'd see these both sides be filled up on the gym here, and that's going to be no good. Boy, Gray came out of nowhere and just missed the putback. I thought he was going to just jam it. 
52-51 Linden. Ryder works off child screen. A nice switch off there defensively between Fortunato and King. They'll go to Harrington. The ball passes around. They try to go to Childs inside. And here's King up ahead to Fortunato and got it. I tell you, you they like to run. If you let them get in the front court, man. Right now, they're forcing the Saints to play at this tempo. Oh, three ball by Childs. We're tied at 54. Not that the Saints can't play the up tempo basketball game. They isolate Fortunato on the side. There's the help coming over Layton. Harrington just got over there late to help out. Tell you, each coach working the matchups. As you can see, Ryder take a breather, look to the sideline, get the call from Coach Bartlett. Harrington thought about taking the shot over the top of Gray, pulled it back down. 17 on the shot clock. Drysdale up, Drysdale no good. Drysdale with his own missed shot up and no, still no good. Tipped around and Burt will come down with the basketball and that'll be out from Drysdale out of bounds. Brad Drysdale, very active in this ball game. And this is a compliment, but a big improvement from the Green Mountain game. Most of it was just mentally wasn't focused in that last game. Comes out here and he's involved and Heiser and set to check in at the scores table for CSJ. And that'll rim out. There's Gray weak side. Boy, the Saints have got to find a body to box out, especially on that weak side. It's killing them. And it's going to be 58-54 now. Linden with the lead. 14-24 to go in regulation. So, yeah, on a night made for college basketball, you can just sit in the comfort of your living room and your vision will bring you the game. Yeah, that shot wouldn't have counted. It hit the backboard support, but there should be shots coming up from the free throw line. Culkins called for the foul. And that will send Childs to the line to shoot a couple. Stops the clock with 14-12. Culkins second foul, team second foul. Nobody on either side in foul trouble. Heiser into the ball game now, and Heiser's going to replace. Well, I don't know. Oh, Ryder needs a break. Yeah, he's coming out and actually push Childs to the point guard position. We're going to see Ryder in the Green Mountain College game. I, 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 without stats in front of me, he must have played all but five minutes of a double overtime game. 58-56 after the free throws, and this is going to be King. Oh, nice screen set for King, and he'll drain it. They set him up with a beautiful screen, and he had all kinds of time to square up to the basket and plan his shot. Jost will break the press, lob it over the top to Harrington. He'll give it right back to Jost. King will make the steal and go out of bounds. Good hustle by King to work himself to the inside and applauds himself as he gets up off the floor. Question at the scores table on the reset of the shot clock. And that's what the break in the action is right now. And again, I invite you to watch Sports Speed on Channel 15. That's my show. And it's on Mondays at 4.30 in the afternoon, Tuesdays at 5.30 in the afternoon, and Thursday nights at 9 p.m. And if you can't wait, you can go to www.pegtv.com. And you can click on Video On Demand, click on Sports Speed, and watch it on the Internet anywhere in the United States of America, in the universe, in the world, in the Milky Way, and all over the place, in the galaxy. So now they are squared away with the shot clock question, and we'll have Doug Childs come out to meet the basketball. Now they're looking for Heiser originally. Harrington came all the way across. And it's going to be saved, and nope, out of bounds as Drysdale stepped out trying to save it, and CSA will turn the ball over. The offense just not quite as fluid with Ryder on the sideline here, but he's, again, starting to get those leg cramps. He's hydrating and he's walking around right now. But you can see the difference in the offense when Ryder not in, he's not in there. 61-56, the lead is swelled up to five now for Linden. Sackett in the ball game, hits the cutter and count it! Burke will get the basket. 
That was set up by Sackett, number 51. Childs will pick up the foul. I believe that's his third. I'll wait for the board. Yeah, three fouls on Childs. Now bring Thomas and Ryda in the ballgame. Childs coming out along with, it looks like, Jokes. For the Saints. In the game right at the 13-24 mark, it's a 63-56, 64-56. Largest lead of the ball game for Linden at eight points right now. King coming out to pick up Ryder. Ryder took the hook, kept his balance. Now, last year, I don't think he would have been able to do that. He's really put on a lot of strength. Kaiser time as he hits a three ball. They look to bring the ball back between circles. King with the grab and Haraida almost getting the steal. Right after that break to get hydrated out there, a lot fresher looking. In the air, almost traveled, three shot, and it's good. Oh, 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 two pointer they're calling it, foot on the line. He reached over the line, no call. I didn't think you could reach over the line and do that. Timeout called by the Saints as they fall down by 10, 69-59. But we watched this the other night. They were in the same position, able to pull the win out. 12.43 to go in the second half. A well-placed timeout right there by Coach Bartlett for CSJ. Is Linden starting to run all over them. I mean, dictating the tempo is one thing, but just controlling the ball game. They've got the floor spread, and Drysdale with nothing to do with the ball. We'll get back to Heiser. Heiser now puts it on the floor. 21 on the shot clock. They don't have to panic. Plenty of time. They denied right of the ball just a second ago. Then he gave it to Drysdale to Harrington. Harrington will find Thomas. And Thomas. Want to thread the needle. There's nobody there. All green jerseys. And that turnover came right after CSA timeout. And Fortunato will miss the layup. And we're going to have a foul called on Gray. Going to see CSJ take the ball out of bounds. That's the third team foul in for on Linden. 25, Obi Bird and back in. The 25 for Linden. Obi Bird into the ball game. This child's back and also for CSJ. They've got to find, see if they've got another run in them here. CSJ up and foul. Sackett can't believe the call, but he will be called for the foul. He's being warned by the official about his reaction to the call. Yeah, and so I'll send Charles line, and it was the free throw shooting that kept CSA in the ball game the other night. They ended up 25 or 35 for the ball game. And he'll roll that one in. As we're at 11.59 to go and lead down the nine. 69.60, Linden, fourth team foul. Linden, first foul on, personal foul on Saka. Harrington is going to get called for the foul. He just tomahawk chopped it and got him on the arm. They're going to call a push from behind on him. I've never seen that before. That was pretty cool. That's his second personal foul. Team's third. <laughs> I mean, at that point, he might as well have just body slammed him. <laughs> Sackett hits three threes in the first half, and he's going to the line. That's going to be three free throws. Fouls on two floor, push, three shots. Yep, and then they had a chat with Matt Ward, so motion's starting to run a little high here in the gym. 69-61, Sackett, like I said, came off the bench in the first half, did very well from the perimeter. I think he had three threes in the first half, and he's at the line to shoot three free throws right here. That's the second foul on Thomas, and there's free throw number one made, makes it a 70-61 ball game. Sackett taking his time on the second shot. Got it. And on his third shot, I'm sorry, 72-61.
they showed pressure. Now they switch up. They want Ford and Fortunato to. Oh yeah, he's matched up with Ryder. And right there, Ryder stole the ball back, and they're going to call Ryder on the foul. Call a push on Ryder. 15 foul. And Saints looking for a timeout. Second foul on Ryder. And CSJ going to take a full timeout. Down by a 72 61 score. Fortunato's been a big difference maker here in the ballgame for Linden, along with that man, Sackett. That's his fourth three, three ball, and then the press has been tremendous in changing the tempo and the tide here, and it's going to be out of bounds. It's be white basketball. It's going to be Harrington Kimura. He'll take the ball on the far side of the uh, CSJ Athletic Complex, out of bounds, brings it into Doug Childs. CSJ just right now kind of blinking in headlights. They're not really sure how to handle this tempo and this press. This is going to be... Drysdale playing without the headband now. See if that will help him. As Child settling for a three ball and swishing it. They needed that one. As Heiser getting set to come in now for a CSJ. They'll run the weave up top to Avery back to Fortunato. Now go through the hands of King, Avery King. To grab the attack, the spin. And look at that, no defense rotated around, and no, there's the putback, no, tapped around, no good, and Drysdale's gonna come down with the basket. CSJ dodging the bullet there, and here comes Childs. To Harrington, he'll change speeds, get it off to Thomas, he'll go up strong and get the finish. Saints cut the lead down to 75, 66. 10, 24 to go in regulation. King as he spins the ball down inside to Burke. Burke working against Drysdale. Tipped by Ryder and he's got it on the run. Up and boy, no foul. Coach Bartlett can't believe that. I got to tell you, I can't believe there isn't an and one on that. I don't know how much contact he had to have to get it, but certainly a head scratcher there. Cuts the lead to 75, 68. That was a moving screen, so yeah. Game getting loose in the stripes out there. Full timeout taken by Linden, 78-68, with 9.50 to go in regulation. We'll get set to put the ball in play. You see Childs and Gray back there. Childs in white, number five. Gray, number 15 for Linden and green. We get set to get this last 9.50 underway. Ten-point deficit for CSJ. But we just watched this a couple nights ago as they came back from 14 down against Green Mountain College. Tell you the difference in Green Mountain College though and Linden that I see is the guard play. I never thought that the Green Mountain College really had a true point guard where there's a lot of good guard play here on Linden. That was Childs with the basket. The grab by King and they want to dump it down. They want to match up great. Now look where he caught the ball on the sweet spot. Boy. Hard shot, and CSJ chance to cut the leads down to 78-70 right now. Childs with the crossover on the attack, double clutches off the glass, and got it. Childs took over late in the game against Green Mountain College and trying to emulate that here tonight as he's got the lead and we'll have a foul called on Childs. It's going to be four on Childs as King beat him to the baseline, and no shots yet. That's why the Fifth foul, team foul, I believe. As Calkins comes in, number 23 for Linden, he'll replace Sackett, number 51. Now Ryder coming in for CSJ late here on the change. And they're bringing Childs out with 9.02 to go in. Of course, the kicker there is he was just picking up the momentum for CSJ. Now he's on the bench with four fouls and still nine minutes to go. King with the catch, King with the fire, no good. Long shot, creates a long rebound on the run. It's Drysdale, Drysdale, stop. Oh, I don't know how there can't be something called there. That should be a foul on Linden on that play. Easily should be a foul on Linden. Yeah. Trail official made the call, and it's a good call. Not because I'm a Saints fan, it was an obvious call. And so CSJ will take the ball to bounds on the baseline. Ryder will set it up. They're going to run the stack formation. They get it into Heiser. Heiser directing some traffic. He wants to get the ball into Jobes. Jobes spins, reverses, left it shy. 
Gray there on the outlet pass, got fouled. And I see if it's both Jost and Drysdale were there. Then that's the seventh team foul, so we'll come down the other end and we'll shoot free throws now the rest of the ball game for Linden. And now it's in Jason Gray to the line. Gray up and no. That was a one and one. And Heiser got the rebound. Flat footed came right to him. And right as they try to find that intensity here, Harrington. Screen set by Jose. He rolled to the basket, got the pass, and goes up. And he'll get the finish this time. Beautiful execution of a screen and roll or pick and roll, whatever you want to call it. But nice pass back from Harrington. And that will make it a 78 74 ball game. There's the help and there's the follow up. Tell you, the help came down in Drysdale, but then they both, Drysdale and Harrington, stayed on the sideline and watched the, uh, for the baseline and watched the play. Drysdale with the catch, Heiser with the pass. Drysdale. Didn't have the isolation that time. We'll bring the ball back out to right. They'll swing it over to Harrington. They've done a good job on Harrington here in the second half, limiting the amount of chances he's getting. Look at that cut, and no. Drysdale came in and couldn't handle the rebound. Fortunato into the front court will go to off to King. King lets the defender go by, up and nice job by King. There's the steal and it's going to stay a steal, Gray. Physically a tough matchup for Harrington tonight, Gray is. He's a physical player and he's got the size. There's Drysdale. Harrington looking a little tired right now. 7.30 to go in the basketball game. 82-74, Linden. And again, there is a good crowd here, but you got to get here in person. Drysdale on the drive. Count it! He's going to take the bucket and get fouled. And one. Brad Drysdale with a whole different attitude tonight. Into the ball game, making a difference. 82-76. Saints with a chance to make it a five-point game here with a made free throw. It's Freeman, number four, coming in the ball game to replace Burke. That's a Linden change. We're watching Munger Vision right now. College basketball on Munger Vision. CSJ basketball right here in Rutland, right in your backyard. You can't watch college basketball. Gets it. 82-77. Now they need some defensive stops. Even though there's a ton of time left, they've got to start that momentum on the defensive end. Heiser took away the pass on the side to Kalk, and they'll go down to Gray. Again, look where Gray's been catching the ball. Down in the sweet spot. That's where they have to actually start the defense, is by pushing them out further. And boy, Gray came all the way back. The lob it across. King with the catch. King up, double clutches, and gets it off the glass and in. I'll tell you what, the press has bothered CSJ tonight. Harrington will throw over the top of King and get it to Drysdale. Boy, you can see the quick hands on King. That's going to be an offensive foul, yeah, no doubt about it. Player control foul, and Coach Bartlett, I think, might need some resuscitating as he just jumped about four feet off the ground. I got, I got to tell you, I thought it was a good call. Just the fact that he lowered his shoulder and motored into the defender. It's Fortunato with 6.35 to go and 86-77 Linden lead. They try to get it into Gray. He went up to get the pass. Culkin goes baseline, sets it up, double clutches, and going to draw the foul. Harrington will pick up the foul. Again, they gave up the baseline. They let him penetrate in deep and that's been a lot of the problem, it's just that Linden's been starting their offense from very deep below the free throw line. They've had no problem accessing below the free throw line. Yeah, so Calkin will go to the line, and that stops the clock with 6.23 to go, and it also is the third foul on Tyler Harrington, 19 foul. So one more foul, and Linden will be shooting two the rest of the night. As Jolfs come out of the ballgame and Doug Childs with his four fouls checks back in after just about a three-minute break. 
Long three minute game time break. About seven minutes in real time. Childs trying to pick back up the momentum. There it is. Thomas up and oh, missed the shot, but going in line to shoot a couple. And the Childs back in there and they needed him in there. Shots foul on King. Thomas, the big man at the line. Seventh team foul on Linden, second foul on King, and Thomas is going to be good on the first free throw. How's that for a lot of numbers, huh? And he'll miss that one, and then the rebound will come out into the hands of Kalk, and he'll go to Fortunato. And they switch off good communications that time defensively as they will go to the trapping defense now that worked against Green Mountain College. But the difference again, guard play with King and Fortunato, it's going to be a lot harder to make that trap work. Childs calls for the ball, wants the ball, and drains the ball. Childs makes it a nine point ball game. Gray will make the catch and then set up inside the arc and miss it. Too much time that time, and the flow of the game now. CSJ wants to push the ball down to Childs. Got the four falls. They put a defender on him, and he tries to set up the three ball and comes up with the air. That was a killer miss right there, that possession. 5.29 to go. Sometimes trying to do a little bit more than what, the, what was called for, and that's Calkin up, and boy, there's no defense on the baseline. They gave him the baseline, nobody rotated out, and easy bucket there, 92-81, Linden. They'll be going back to work on the defense in practice for CSJ. Getting a forced shot by Childs, and Fortunato will come out of the pack with the ball. A lot of time left, 4.59 to go. they got to make a stop, though. King catches, squares, and no. Ball kept alive by Gray, ends up in Drysdale's hands. He'll spin around and find Jamie Ryder. Ryder. Looks to the bench, heard the words, it's going to be a timeout, and the Saints down by 11. Need another free to come back with 4.43 to go in the basketball game. And so far, I brought you two men's games, and they've both been excellent ball games. That's why you got to get down here to see if she's at that complex. Watch it on Munger Vision still, but catch the game live. And they need points. Harrington from his office. Well, drain it. What it is now is the net. There you go. Oh, I've always wanted to be able to do that, jump up and do that to the net. Now the full court press by CSJ Freeman. We'll get the pass out into the hands of Gray. 92-84, Linden. Calkin with the ball will squirt it out the pack and put it in the hands of King, Avery King. Nice job by Drysdale, had it lost it, and last touch by Drysdale. Yeah, Burke coming in the ball game. He's going to replace Freeman. That's a Linden change. As they get all the substitutions set, the ball we put into play now. We'll just toss over to Burke, he'll chase it down at the arc. Again, look where Gray caught the ball. They've got to push him out from that spot. I mean, he's setting up six feet from the basket. That's the problem. It happens before the ball even gets put into play to him. CSJ not in a position to change baskets, exchange baskets right now. Child's up, no, it'll rim out on him. Drysdale up, blocked by Burke. And Drysdale on the ground will get up. Thomas with the steal and got a foul. Tell you what, Culkin showed me some cojones there as he stood in front of a charging Thomas. He's got to go 230-240. And he, he stood there and he'll draw the foul and Thomas will go to the line. And they need all the points they can get right now. Any way they can get them. Down by 10. Time running out here with 2.41 to go. It's the third fall on Calkin, and they'll be front rimmed by Tom. Yeah, he got to have more patience at the line. He was backing up before the shot was released. What are they teaching in 6 Stay at the line. Stay at the line. You'll make that one. 
King looking for the home run pass up ahead to Fortunato. Will make the grab, plant, stop, hit the trailer, Burke, and that's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. Saints fan or not, that was awesome. Drysdale bringing the dribble down to right on to Harrington. Drysdale will step up and two pointer. Oh, they need points. One, two, or three pointers. They can't be fussy right now. They don't need to sell out though for the three ball. You see the trap, not as effective against better guard play tonight. Fortunato up and got it. Heck the basket and got it. 98 87 Linden. Linden on the verge of a 100 point night. And Tyler Harrington all the way in. And they missed the double on Culkin at midcourt. He'll spin away from the pressure, go up, and I like the fact that they are attacking. They've got the big lead, 98-89. 2.30 to go in the basketball game, right up. Between circles, we'll give it off to the right side, and Harrington. The Drysdale, the Childs, who's in the paint, turns and got it. Same deal right there, where Childs caught the ball. He was four feet from the basket. That was the defensive problem. Don't let him get down to that spot and establish a position and the pass come into him. There's all kinds of help. And a steal. I got to tell you right there, CSA got a big break on that no call. Here comes Ryder into the front court. His three-pointer blocked, and here comes Gray. It's a three-on-one break for Linden. Up and showtime. They'll get it. And a 30-second timeout being taken. As you can see, Ryder pretty tired right now. It's a 30-second timeout, 100 to 91. And you, you think there's no action down here? That's 191 points still with two minutes to go in the ball game. There, have Childs come down, take the ball about 152 to be exact in the ball game. 100 to 91. CSA down by nine. There's time, there's time, but they need more, two things, they need to take care of the basketball on the offensive end, and they need some defensive stops, and they haven't, been able, obviously they've given up 100 points. Here comes the Temple at you, they're running and gunning still, the King down the floor, got it. Tell you, Temple, I've always said this in every game I've done anywhere, high school, girls, boys, college, Temple is the number one thing, they talk about all these keys to the game, but the team that, like Linden, they pushed the tempo to where they wanted it, and they've accelerated here. The lead. 102 to 91 with 124 to go, and that right there, I'm not saying Neil's in the coffin, or it's over yet, but it's certainly going to be very difficult. Now they're going to start be taking three balls. So Conkin at the line. That's the 10th team fall, I mean, they're over the 10 team limit. Two shots coming up, missed the first. Well, this game certainly will give them something to work on in practice, talking about CSJ, they've given up 103 points, they've scored 91, so it's not like Linden's had this uh, tremendous defensive game themselves. Drysdale up and got it. They're letting the boys play tonight. A little push there from Burke to Drysdale. One minute to go in the basketball game and almost a steal by Childs off from Fortunato. 103-93. And Calkin will take the ball out of bounds for Linden. Quick, quick and quicker. That's what Linden's been. King and Fortunato, number three and 11, really have established the temple they wanted, and Gray was the dictator. Look at that, downside to Burke. They spread the defense around and then just pushed the ball to the cutters, and they made it look easy here in the second half. 105 to 93. Harrington with no other choice will rattle it around, no good. Burke, or Drysdale kept it alive, and on the shot, a foul. That will stop the clock and send CSA to the line. Childs at the line to shoot two. Fortunato with the foul. Three on Fortunato. Let's 
Metro Love with the clock down to 40.6 seconds to go. The shot clock obviously still in effect at 35 seconds, but. Now 90, 94 points right there. Usually 94 points in a ball game is gonna win it for you in, in, in AIA basketball, but I don't think that's gonna be the cause tonight, the case tonight. And they had to foul to stop the clock and there'll, there'll be two shots coming up as Ryder called for the foul. That'll be his fourth. So the Saints started to chip away late in the game at that lead, but that's when Linden, they didn't spread the floor and hold the ball. They kept attacking. They spread the floor and would send people to the basket, being aggressive and attacking. Big difference in those teams that spread the floor and then hold the ball, take the air out of it. That's how teams come back against you. I love what Linden did tonight. They just put the foot on the throat and took every inch of life out of you. There goes Avery King. I think he was just tremendous tonight in this win for Linden. And the guy at the line, Fortunato, equally as the president, because they set the tempo. Thomas up for three and got it. Now they're going to adjust the clock here. It's at, should be at 29, almost 30 seconds, 106.97. A nine point leader telling Calkin he can run the baseline. And they'll get the ball in. Gray will come back, meet the pass. Had the ball ripped out of his hands, ends up in Calkin's hands. Nice catch by Fortune Island on the short hop. 24 seconds, and there's the foul by Drysdale. Again, they had to stop the clock. Drysdale will pick up the foul. Ball on the number 15, Brad Drysdale. Once again, shooting two four. And this will just about seal the deal. I did it. Lead at 10 with 22 seconds to go. And Saints will go to two wins, one last on the season. But there was a lot to learn in this ball game. Lessons to be learned every night. And tonight, there were a lot of them they could take out of this. Childs up. Childs can't get the finish. And on the rebound, they'll whip it out to Calkin. Now he shouldn't fall. Now, yeah, no foul lead. He said, Gray. Looking for the finish, and Harrington will pick up the foul. Well, Diane, that's pretty much the way, if you're Linden, to put an exclamation point on the victory tonight, on the road, on the 110th point. It came on a dunk from their muscle man, Gray, Jason Gray. That's Jason Gray is good. Jason will be Tell you what, he is a heck of a player, Mr. Gray. Harrington will pick up this fourth foul. That's so relevant right now. And with eight seconds to go, they're going to bring Dan Mindek into the ball game for Gray. Got it. So Gray will join his teammates on the bench, and tell you what, he's an impressive-looking ball player. That, and, and the coach did a nice job of the, the strategy of the game. He had, a, he was able to force the way he wanted the game played. He came up with a system and a style to get there, and it's going to be Linden. 111 to 97. Look at that off. Tremendous offensive show here tonight at CSJ. Get out there, support Saints basketball and always support Bunger Vision. Congratulations, Linden, and a good effort by CSJ.